the atmosphere of playing in Europe is it's next level. What's up everybody, welcome back to another YouTube video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Tyron Johnson. I'm a professional basketball player and I'm currently playing in France. This channel is very simple. I love to hoop, create, and motivate. I also break down some film and help you, know, you guys get better at your game. So check out the Breaking Down Your Game playlist on my channel. It's gonna really help you. But today I want to talk about a question that I often get asked, you know, how is it playing overseas? What do you like and what do you hate? So I'll do a video, what I'm doing today, about the five things that I love the most about playing overseas. And I'll also do a video about the five things that I hate about playing overseas. So since we're starting off with the five things that I love, let's start with number one, the travel. You get to travel to some of the most beautiful places to play the game that you love and make a bunch of money while doing it. It's like a win-win. You get a paid vacation and you're hooping. Like it don't get no better than that to me. So you get to see all of these places. I played in a couple of countries. I played in Japan, I played in Dominican Republic, Turkey, Greece, France, Denmark, Sweden, Switzerland, Belgium, uh, about 10 countries. I've, I've played in about 10 countries, but I've visited so much more because the travel is so cheap over here. You can be in Belgium and you can be in Amsterdam in two hours. You can be in Belgium and you can be in Germany in two hours. You can be in France and you can be in Germany in two hours. I, I live an hour and a half away from Paris and that's a major airport. I can go straight to London. I can go down south to Barcelona. I can go to Lisbon, Portugal. It's so much things to, so much places to explore when you're playing overseas because everything is so close. I've also played in places like Mexico, which I've seen a whole different, I have a whole different perspective about Mexico, me being from America. We get a vision of what Mexico is. And when I got there, I'm like, whoa, this place is beautiful. And you know, just getting to see all of these experience while playing a game you love, it's an amazing thing, man. And that's, that would probably be, that's why I got it number one on my list because you can't get much better than that. The second thing I would say is the simplicity, the simplicity of life. In America, everything is moving at a fast pace. In America, it's all about the dollar. Now it's all about the dollar pretty much everywhere, but you really got to get money in America. So everything that you're doing is predicated upon about, is this going to bring me money or is I'm going to be wasting time? Whereas here, everything is a little bit laid back. You know, you're heavily taxed. Well, I'm heavily taxed. And life is a little more simple. You know, people still live family first. I'll give you a small example. Like stores here close from like 12 to 2.30. Like totally shut down. They're like, they're not working. <laughs> and they go home, be with their family or go play with their dog or they just rest. It's no such thing as a 24 hour store in, in little cities, like I'm in a little city. In the big cities like Paris and London and Brussels, you have the 24 hour spots. But in most of these little cities outside of, this, outside of the big cities, there's no 24 hour stores. Stores close at eight o'clock, 9.30, something like this. But you know, in America, everything is 24 hours. People are hustling, working 13, 14 hours. So they're grumpy, they're tired, they're aggravated. You know, so you get meaner people. <laughs> and it, it's just going out for like a walk here is just so calm, it's safe. You know, um, I've never heard of anyone getting robbed. Um, I've never heard of anyone getting killed. And if somebody does get killed over here, it's like uh, national news and 
everyone's going crazy because it's not common that you just walk outside and somebody shoot you. It's not common that you just walk outside and somebody hit you with a knife. And I experienced this. I played most of my years in France, so this is my experience in France. But also in Belgium, I felt the same. In Japan, I was totally safe. I, I was very felt. I felt very safe in Japan. Um, even in a country like Mexico, I lived in Chihuahua. Um, I didn't feel no threat on my life, and I never really seen anyone get robbed. I didn't see anyone get killed. Um, I don't watch the news as much as I do back home, and people aren't talking about the news as much. But yeah, it's just. I don't, it, it, it's, it's, it's real simple here, man. It's like, I go to practice and I come home and it's like, I can get my Zen here. I have time to meditate. I have time to think about my future. I have time to run. I got six businesses. Like when I started playing overseas, I started a freelance business. I started um, online training programs. I started uh, selling merchandise. I started mentoring. I started running camps. Like I started a lot of stuff, man, photography and videography. Well, I did all of those things while I was playing professional basketball because I had so much time and life is so simple. I could really do all the things I love. So that's one thing I love about playing overseas is that you get to play, you play for about four or five hours, and then you got the rest of your day and you can do whatever you want. I would tell all you hoopers out there, oh, this goes even for people with normal jobs. Use that extra time wisely. Use that time wisely to build up other things that you might be interested in whenever you finish playing. Number three, how healthy it is. It's, you can taste the difference in the food from America and the food around the world. It's like, you can just start with chickens. Like, you can see what a real chicken leg is supposed to look like. Well, I'm from in America. I live in Houston. I'm from Louisiana. The chicken legs are the size of my head. Like, <laughs> I don't know no chickens that big. Of course it's being shot up with GMOs. Of course it's having all kinds of other things on it. Over here, a lot of those things are illegal. A lot of those things you just cannot put in the food. You can taste the difference in the Coca-Cola, in the Powerade, like, you'll think like it's flat because it's not as much sugar. It's just super healthy. Whenever you go out to the restaurants, you don't get like big cups. You don't get free refill. You get little cups. You get little bottles of water that's like, uh, uh, drinks that's like three, three euros, four dollars, something like this. It's not, you can't overindulge like that. It, it's it's kind of crazy because I'm so used to getting everything free refill, buffets, I mean, they have a little bit of that out here, but it's not the norm. But like you go to McDonald's, it's no supersize. Like the medium drink is the large drink here. You know, so it's it, it's just very healthy, man. It's, it's the food. You can just tell the difference. And that's one thing I like because I feel better. I feel better as a player. I feel better as a human. Whenever I eat back home, just to be honest, I go straight to sleep. And you can see in America, we have an obesity problem, something that we have to tackle. Over here, it's not as bad. Of course, there's obesity here, but it's not as nowhere near as bad as back home. So, number three is the health, man. Um, and I come from a place they call it Cancer Alley. So our air is very polluted. <laughs> so it feels really well, it feels really good to be able to go outside and just smell fresh air. Like we live right by like a river and it's, you know, it's, amazing that you can go outside and just get some natural natural fresh air because where I come from I live in South Louisiana along the Mississippi River where there's a bunch of power plants and the air is polluted you can smell the chemicals like that's not healthy so they call it cancer alley but I don't experience those type of things over here. I just don't. It's even whenever you want to get like wine, like the wine is down the street. <laughs> you know, uh, if you want like this local produce is popular. Every Saturday you got the markets. You can go on the market and get local produce. Like 
all of that is just healthy, especially knowing where your food is coming from and you knowing exactly how it's being made. You can talk to the people that's making your food. I just, I just really love that. And that's the food side, but then you get back to the health side for us fitness and lifestyle. It's like, it's actually, it's cool. Like going out to run and ride your bike. It's not like an obligation because you have gained weight. It's like a part of their lifestyle is, you know, I'm going for a run today. I'm going to ride the bike. Whereas what I've seen growing up is people get overweight and then they want to run and then they want to do the bike because they're trying to make up for all the weight that they've gained. Whereas over here, people are just outside enjoying themselves. Like it's not so much, they're not so much into media like Americans are, you know, um, media kind of run America. Like we want to know people's business. They're kind of illiterate to that over here. They just really enjoy themselves and they still kind of stick to a natural lifestyle, almost. I mean, they got their issues, but it's close, you know? So I love the healthy lifestyle over here, man. It's it's it, it's it's good for me because it, it represents everything that, every way that I try to live my life. Number four would be meeting new friends and family. It's uh, It's amazing to see different cultures and different perspectives and meet people that have different beliefs as me. You know, coming from a small town in Louisiana and we were, I was raised like on slave plantations. Like around me is three slave plantations. So that's where I come from. So the people mindset is in a bubble. So when I got out of that bubble, it was kind of interesting to me to see how people acted, see how people responded to things. And it was a little weird for me, but I was like open-minded. I've always been very open-minded. You know, I always had a small circle, but one thing about playing overseas is, is that you'll realize that people are gonna forget about you because you're millions of miles away. I've been playing overseas for 10 years and I've only had one family member, not even a family member, he's my brother. He's like my one of my best friends. Um, he's the only person that came visit me. and. That put a lot of things in perspective for me because, you know, I'm on team, I'm on my team and I would have teammates that have multiple family members come and visit them throughout the year. Mama, daddy, sister, cousin, uncle, brothers, and they're super excited just to see their family member. Whereas, you know, I would have family members that would say they're afraid to fly or they're too this, they don't have the money and all of that's BS to be honest. But so since you don't have that, you gotta create other family. You know, I've always been taught that family is who you can call on. Family is who you can be your true self with. That's what I've kind of learned, that who you can be yourself unapologetically with, that's family. Relatives is y'all just related by blood. So I, I have to create more family. And I've created family around the world from Japanese family, Mexican family, Belgian family, French family. I got families around the world and people that I consider real close friends and pe bonds that I've created that's unbreakable. And that's the best part because these people are Christians, Muslims, uh, Mormons. I don't, I'm not a part of any re religion. Uh, these people are Republicans, Democrats. I'm an independent thinker. So it's like, it's good to get all those sides of the spectrum because it keeps me balanced and it helps me not judge. And it helps me, I come up in an all black community. So I got friends that's, that's white. <laughs> like that was impossible where I came from. And I said in a song, I, don't, I forgot what song it was. I was like, uh, I got so-called white people in my family free. You get love, I get love. That sound like family to me. So it's like, I just erased that color situation. I understand that color matters and it, it, it affects how we live. It affects how society treats people, but that's some weird shit. But I still, I'm a lover, man. And I don't care what your religion, what your skin color, what you believe in, I judge your character. And um, it's just amazing having those family and friends worldwide and still having the family and friends back home too, you know, but if you don't see a person for 10 years, you only see them for two months out of the year, you know, it's kind of tough to still consider that family. You never can give up on family though.
So I'm working on that, but it, it, it hurts. That, that's a tough part about playing overseas, but it's also a great part because you get to get out and find more family. No excuses over here. And fifth, I would say the fans. The fans are the like the best part. That's why I say it for last. The fans are the best part about playing overseas because it goes back to that college atmosphere. Whereas you got these villages, you got these towns, and people are passionate about their towns. People, the games, our games are sold out. I played in bigger leagues and higher levels of basketball and the games were sold out, standing room only. People are shouting, people are into the games. And they're just, man, they're just special. The atmosphere of playing in Europe is, is next level because every game is like a playoff game. It's not like, you know, the NBA whereas things get serious in the playoffs whenever you're trying to make the playoffs. Over here, every game is like a playoff game. And I just love that. That that keeps me going as a player. And I just respect the fans so much, especially like I'll give you a couple of examples. When I played in Japan, the fans do research on you. They really went and researched that Tracy McGrady is my favorite player. So they went out and found Tracy McGrady sports cards. That was like one of the best gifts I ever got. They found the type of sauce I like to put on my food in Japan. And I would have these baskets waiting for me after the game. Like just great people, you know. Um, in Mexico, you, you, you eat uh, tacos with the people after the game, like with the fans, like y'all chilling and y'all eating tacos, y'all talking. I don't even speak Spanish, but we communicating. Like that's amazing times. Even in France, it's like the people here are a little more shy because the country is way more developed. So you got status like that. You know, in countries like Mexico and Japan, status and stuff really don't matter. They just unapologetically appreciate the players. But here, you know, we got status situation. But whenever you get to talk to them and you spend time with them and you eat with them and you share your, share your different stories, you get to see, oh, these people are genuine, they're nice. They admire you, they just show it in a different way. And building those relationships, I mean, that's why I love playing here. I got like a whole bunch of relationship with the fans that, you know, I got to play hard because I, I got to respect the name of my jersey because I have a connection with the people. Sorry about that. <laughs> I have a connection with the people and I have a connection with the club. So it makes, it's that passion that comes out of it, man. It's like, it, it's a business, but you can still, shut off that business side and still play for something that's stronger than money and stronger than opportunities and just love and respect the people that you're working with every day. I've been working with these people for four years, same coaches, uh, some of the same teammates. So, you know, I, I owe them because <laughs> they mean a lot. And uh, that's the best part, that family atmosphere, man, the fans and it's amazing, man. So that's my top five things about playing overseas. Um, if you guys played overseas, let me know what, what what's your top five. If you got any questions about playing overseas, leave that in the comment. Um, please like this video and subscribe to the channel, you know, so you always can be updated. And besides that, man, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.